How's it going gamers? My name is Rushcode, and on my left you can see some words that I've worked out how to generate based on a list of words that I have here. And what's really cool about this is the way I went about getting these words. So I actually grabbed them from a couple of text files I made. And as you can see, one of those text files has a list of messy words in it with other symbols, while the other text file is made up of two sentences. And yet somehow I was able to separate all of it into this. So I wanted to show you how I did this today. And it involves going from a text file to an Excel CSV file to a uh, data table. And you also need a struct along the way for formatting. And then you can actually do some blueprints with it. First thing you want to do is grab the stuff from these text files, copy them and paste them into an Excel CSV file. So this is what those files need to look like, specifically with the first column being dedicated to row numbers. You can put anything else there if you want, but they need to be separate from the stuff you want to import. This is because Unreal Engine requires that first column to be like the row numbers for it. It, it doesn't read it like Excel does on the side here. And then the first row is dedicated to the headings. So this heading here is quite important because Unreal Engine will need to identify that specific heading, like words, in order to grab all of these words and put them into a data table. So I've done the same thing with this other file here. I've also called it words, even though I really should call it sentences. But the reason is because of my struct format. So once you have these files, make sure you save it as a CSV Excel file. And then in Unreal Engine, you want to make some kind of struct, which is by going to uh, blueprints and then structure. So this will allow you to create a struct. This is what mine looks like. It has a single line where you just have words. And that is very important because that's the heading Unreal Engine is going to recognize with just whatever type of stuff you're going to have in it. In my case, words, so strings. The default value can be left empty. And once that is saved, this will then inform the engine on how to read the format of your Excel files. So if I were to drag in a copy of one of those Excel files, like my sentences, I'd have to select the column struct for the second option here. And when I apply that, it will read the information from the Excel file using this struct as a guideline. And so here we have a new data table, which is the same as my sentences table. So I'll just go to this one here. And you can see that it looks exactly the same, or almost identical to my Excel file. It's the same case for the list of words. So nothing's really filtered or separated out properly yet, but we'll come to that now. So now that we have these data tables, we can go to our blueprints and wherever you want to do that and then starting off you would set up a local data table that brings in the one we just made. From there you want to get the data table row names which then separates all of that information into a nice array which you can then use in a for loop to get each element or each uh, cell but that still means that everything is jumbled together you just have the rows into a nice array so getting a data table row each of those things will then be added into an actual string array. So the whole point of these nodes here is to grab your data table and convert it into a string array because that's much easier to work with. Once you have it as an array, you can actually join all of those words and elements together into a single line because then you can actually pass it into an array using a delimiter, using a semicolon because I have semicolons in my text file, which then allows you to properly separate out all the words. It's quite, it's quite a few hoops to jump through to go from a messy list of words and sentences into a clean array, but it is necessary. So once you get to this point, you have the array and you can do whatever you want with it. In my case, I've decided to output the list of word 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 10, and also output each word one at a time every second. And I've also done the same thing for the sentences. But you can see there's something a little bit different going on in the middle here. So there's a word called toolbar concatenates. Those are meant to be two words. And here's the reason why it's joined together as one word. It's because when I joined it as a string, I didn't specify any separator. And back in my notepad file, you can see that there is no space after toolbar, nor is there one before concatenate. So when we joined the strings, these two words joined together as a single word. And when I passed it into an array, I very explicitly specified a space bar there. So it would separate all of these words according to the space bars, except for toolbar concatenates, which is why they're joined together. To fix that, all you need to do is put a space bar over here. So when you're joining all the different elements together, 
together, it'll make sure there's at least one spacebar between them and then separating them using a delimiter of that, it should fix the problem. So if we run this now, we can see there's toolbar and concatenates as two separate words. And then when it comes along in the stream, in the output stream here, we can see, yep, there we go. They both came out separately. And that is all there is to it. It's quite a long process. You would start from a text file, convert it into a CSV, and then convert it into a data table using a struct. And from there, you would want to get into a string array using a few nodes. But then you also have to rejoin it and separate it out again to get the final form, which is what this looks like. The only reason word four, word five are joined together and word seven, comma, word eight are joined together is because in my original text file, I didn't put a semicolon after word four and I didn't put a semicolon between word seven and eight. I put a comma. Unreal Engine doesn't care about that comma. So it's just going to join it all together anyway, indifferently. And if you're wondering how I output all of this, well, it's it's all of these nodes down here. I don't really want to go into all of this stuff. It's just, I just put this together haphazardly and in a bit of a rush, uh, but it works. So I'm not going to complain about it. It generally just involves quite a bit of maths to do with divisions and remainders and all that stuff uh, to do with working out when at which specific tick that I wanted to change the word from the list. Um, and this one down here is just showing how I output some of that stuff. So I hope this made sense to you guys. Just have a play around with it using the nodes I showed you and some of those variables. The key to all of this is to use an Excel CSV file. Unfortunately, there's no way to use a text file directly in Unreal Engine. I think you'd have to use C++ for that stuff, but that's all there is to this video. So thanks for watching, guys. If you liked it, smash like, hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Rush code out.